you apply science to preventing injuries, that's behavior-based safety. So once your industrial um, hygienists and occupational engineers have figured out the safest way to do some task or activity, then we come in and we can help people do it that way consistently. How do organizations begin the process of implementing behavior-based safety? Where do they start? First step is really an internal marketing campaign. People from all levels, frontline employees to the CEO, need to really believe that there's an advantage to doing this. And then secondly, because of the investment that's required, leadership needs to make that commitment and ensure that they'll be willing and able to support it over the long term. The rest of it is that you have people going out, they're doing observations on their coworkers, and then they're giving each other feedback for the safe behaviors. And the goal, of course, is to increase the consistency of those behaviors. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is people not realizing that it's not simply having a checklist and you know having this little conversation around safety. All the support pieces need to be built around it. And um, probably the most common challenge that you have is people oversimplifying the process. There's two main areas. First off, the steering committee needs to understand what their role is, mm -hmm. which is a pretty big role. They need to encourage participation in the process. They need to make sure that the integrity of the process is maintained. And they need to use the information from the observations to remove those barriers to safe behavior. And then leadership has a role, too. You know, even though it's an employee-managed process, their role is to visibly support the process and the steering. One of the things that you'll see is an increase in in-depth conversations that people have around safety. So all of a sudden, people are saying, hey, what's the safest way to do this? How can we get this done? And encouraging each other to be safe. And who are the people who are having these conversations? Um, all employees. So in a behavior-based safety process, everyone is out there doing observations and giving each other feedback for safe behaviors. And the other part of it is that the information that's obtained from the observations can then be used by your steering committee to remove those obstacles that get in the way of people being able to do their jobs. I, I'm hoping that this is a fair question to ask. I'm just going to go ahead and ask it. <laughs> How does the company know that it's ready to get involved in behavior-based safety? Well, you want to have the basics in place. People need to be able to have the opportunity to perform safe. So if there's an environment that's hugely unsafe, where behavior wouldn't matter, then you want to get that stuff taken care of first. Makes sense. So, And once they've made that decision, then what do they do? Then they really need to take a look at their organization and see what are the barriers to implementing a process, what are those elements that would support a process, and who the key players are, both formal leaders and informal leaders. And like I mentioned earlier, start getting their buy-in and their support before you even start designing it.